So the question is, will the 10 gigabytes that is rumored to be on an RTX 3080 be sufficient for 4K gaming, considering that the upcoming game consoles have 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 RAM? That's a good question, and with most such questions, the answer is, it depends. My opinion is that initially it'll be fine. Over time, it's not going to age very well because the rumored 3090 has 24 oh, gigs of VRAM, exactly. of course, for obviously a lot of money. I'd be happier if it had 12 gigs of VRAM instead of 10. We've had 11 gigs in the past two top end cards and eight gigabytes is actually starting to be limiting on some of the most recent games. If you legit wanna play at 4K, and by 4K, this is an important point. We're not talking about Fortnite, Apex Legends, and Overwatch here. If you want to play those games at 4K, you won't need a 3080 to do that. A 2070 will be great. Frankly, even a 1080 would be enough to play a lot of those games at 4K, 60 frames per second without any trouble. However, Cyberpunk 2077, Flight Simulator 2020, uh, Watch Dogs Legion, mm -hmm. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, mm -hmm. if you want to play those games at 4K, and typically, I run into the presumption that the higher resolution, the more important detail settings are. Now, Ultra ultra is for screenshots and high is for playing games. But I, some people would say, well, just put it at low detail and then you can play it at 4K. Well, why are you bothering with 4K then? I mean, it, the whole point of going from 1080p to 1440p to 4K is for better quality. For, uh, 1080p at Ultra may very well be objectively better than 4K at low because all the texture detail goes away, all the yep. polygons go away, shadows are gone, and it just it ends up being a muddled mess. A really good example of this is um, Ghost Recon Wildlands. Oh, Not yes. Breakpoint, but Wildlands. In Wildlands, medium detail or high, medium to ultra, there is a difference, but it's small grades of difference. Medium is pretty enough playable enough and nice enough. Right. High is better, and then very high in ultra, there's actually four different detail settings there. It's just variations of, let's require you to buy a faster graphics card for minutia detail. Yeah. Low is like a completely different game. It feels like you're playing a PlayStation 2 game. Oh. The detail goes to complete awfulness. And low detail really does feel like a different game. And it's, it, it, here's what's interesting. On very low end graphics, on six, seven, eight year old video cards, on entry level video cards from years ago, you might have to go to low to even get the thing to play, but mm. it looks terrible. So yeah, if you're going 4K, I'm assuming high detail are better. Right. So Assassin's Creed Bahala, I am kind of under the opinion, obviously when this is being recorded, we have not even gotten the announcement on the cards yet. yet. We We haven't, seen them, we haven't done benchmarks, so we're speculating a bit. If your objective is to play games for the next two to three years at 4K, high detail or better, 60 frames per second or better, and it's to play Watch Dogs Legions, the Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the next Tomb Raider game, etc., it's RTX 3090 or bust. Mm. Both for the VRAM and for the performance jump and to have a little bit of longevity. If, on the other hand, you want to play at 4K, 60 frames per second, high detail or better in Apex Legends and Fortnite and Overwatch and Rainbow Six Siege, oh, for Pete's sakes, you probably don't even need a new video card. No. I've actually done a video showing Grand Theft Auto V, 1080p, uh, excuse me, what? Grand Theft Auto V, 4K, 65 frames per second average on a GTX 1050 Oh, yes, TI. I remember that video. Now, that's its standard normal detail setting, not ultra, but a GTX 1060 yeah. will do high detail 60 frames per second in GTA 5. Now, that's an older game, but sure. it just demonstrates that how much you need. Assassin's Creed Valhalla will probably need an RTX 3090 to do ultra detail at 4K, but Fortnite will do it on a 1070. Well, maybe 1080. It depends on what detail setting you do. The other thing to keep in mind with graphics cards, and the last thought here, is render resolution. Instead of compromising on resolution, what you can always do is if you set a game, especially if you have a 27-inch 4K monitor, yeah. maybe a 30-inch 4K monitor, 
or you're sitting a little bit further back. Mm -hmm. If you set the game to the monitor's native resolution, but you set render resolution to 75%, oh. the HUD, the interface, the text on the screen, the menus will all be super, super crisp. The game internally will downscale its render resolution, but still display at 4K. In the middle of action and explosions and shooting things. Now, if you freeze frame, if you lower the render resolution far enough, yes, you can kind of, oh, well, I can see with a compromise. Yeah, but do you freeze frame and pick out, you know, do you pixel hunt? No, or do you no, just play your game? No, when you're getting shot at. <laughs> you're like, oh, I'm being oh. shot at. Oh, I'm being shot at in 4K. Oh, That's look better. at that pixel. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow, that blast was really realistic. <laughs> so. Um, Not unless you're the Matrix. Lowering the render resolution by, you know, down to like 75% can go a long way towards making frame rates smoother while really not taking much away from the overall fidelity. Mm -hmm. So that's my thought on 4K and future gaming. There we go. There we go, Andy. Jolly good. All right.